culturally, how do you deal with, how do you think of competition? So Starling aside on the basis of, you know, like there's always this, like in the back of your mind, you, you started it. So they're in your mind, but obviously Revolut and others, was there like an attitude about it? Was it irrelevant? Just focus. We're all got massive, massive market. So it's as interesting as NatWest or Lloyd's. How, how was the, not your personal opinion, but how was the company culture in relation to that? Uh, irrelevant. It, we just didn't think about it. Um, yeah. yeah. We we didn't think about it, and the only thing we did was that if anyone was bad mouthing competitors, we would shut it down very very quickly. Like if you know, if a big bank had an outage or whatever, you know, a story came out about competitor X doing something bad, people you know there's a sort of tendency to be like, oh well, you know, we always knew they were insert expletive, and just like yeah, yeah. that is not useful or helpful and. If it gets out into the public, it's just going to cause a massive negative story that we don't need. And it's just like, it's unnecessary. Yeah. So don't do it. Like, really, we tried to shut that down pretty quickly. Um, but overall, we just, we didn't really pay any attention to any of the competitors. Perhaps we should have. I think Revolut probably was better at making money than we were. We perhaps should have looked a little more closely at a couple of things they were doing. Um, but for the rest of it, I, I just think the big banks in particular were just uh, sort of irrelevant. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, looking back, what do you actually think you did really well at Monzo that led to your success? And what do you think you didn't do so well that meant you couldn't be even more successful? Uh, I think that's a simple one. I think we create, I mean, we created a, just an amazing brand uh, and community and followership. We're last year, I think, or 2019 at least, we were the most recommended brand in the UK. Wow. Almost 10 percentage points clear of the next brand, which was TransferWise. I mean, we were just so head and shoulders of in terms of of just a brand that was authentic and real and resonated with people um i think it it was just fabulous um and i'm really really proud of that and i i think you know a few people who did a lot to make that happen tristan thomas was our vp of marketing who who joined as a marketing intern wow amazing who basically is responsible for that i'm incredibly grateful for so i think the brand basically when it led to a lot of very positive side effects like very very rapid organic growth without spending those in marketing um what we did wrong was just not pay enough attention soon enough to unit economics which is just a balance between marginal cost and revenue um and that was just out of whack for too long and meant we had to raise more money than our competitors um on on and not ter- the terms are still great but relatively speaking worse terms than our direct competitors um uh, yeah, we just didn't push revenue generating features and, and, you know, charging for things soon enough. Things like a very, very small minority of customers would just like only use the Monzo card to take out cash when they went abroad. It's just like incredibly costly and totally pointless because you can spend with your card and you get a great exchange rate. Why do you need the cash? Um, or, you know, there's some customers who like ordered 20 or 30 replacement cards a year. We had a board member who came from American Express, and he's oh yeah, I had a customer who that do that, and she was making a dress. She's like an artist who made an American Express dress out of all the cards. It's like cool, but that just costs so much money. Please don't do it. So let's get to I guess the most recent chapter in your life, which is you know the your current lived experience, which is something you know, that not all founders go through, which is leaving your company um, that you founded and, you know, at, at a point where there's there's still so much to do. And, you know, it's, it's, it's really interesting because it's such a, it is such a common story, but not such a commonly told story. Um, it won't surprise you um, that I am particularly interested in this part, not just from the experience share that you can teach other people or you can rather rather than teach, share, so that others can learn, listen with empathy and have some understanding of it. Um, but also, you know, you came out recently and talked about some of the mental health struggles and personally as someone that runs a mental health related company and is big into entrepreneurship and mental health, which I think do not get discussed anywhere near enough. And so there's always a big focus in secret leaders. These are really important things to share. Um you know, the name Monzo and the name Tom Blomfield have been so in 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 interconnected over the last few years. 
the the first question I want to ask you is about identity, which is before we get into like leaving and not whatever, like how are you feeling with regards to your identity at the moment? Um, pretty good, I think. I mean, it's, I've had a bit of time to mull it over and I'm really, really proud of what we created Monzo and the part I played in that. Um, and I'm, but it's also nice to have kind of that separation. I had my, I lost access to my company emails and Slack about nine days ago. Um, and to not have that weight is really nice, actually. Uh, running a bank of 5 million customers is really hard, it turns out. And there are people... Yeah, yeah who knew? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are people who've just done it, you know, they've trained for their whole careers and they've run, you know, had a CEO position or, you know, number two or number three position and sort of trained for this. And they're good at it and they enjoy it. And that's awesome that they're in place doing a great job now. And it just wasn't me, it turns out. Um, and so I'm proud of it. And it, I think it will be something that defines a big part of my life for probably the rest of my life. Um, will I ever, ever do anything that's sort of as well known? I, I don't know. I, I actually don't have particular aspirations to go out and kind of beat it. Um, I would love to... I, I, I think I would love to focus more inwardly, if that makes sense, on like personal fulfillment and contentment and sort of happiness and family and friends rather than like what's the biggest company you can create because i had a stab at that and it you know it went pretty well and i enjoyed a lot of it um but there were also parts that i didn't love took over my life really to the detriment of basically every other part of my life um so that was tricky but um yeah it's a weird mix of emotions a, a pride but a sort of sadness and uh, some amount of regret um yeah it's complicated <laughs>